Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Gillespie with anatomyconversations.com. Today I want to talk with you a little bit about the venous sinuses. The venous sinuses are where the primary drainage occurs for venous blood out of the cranium. And they're a little bit different from what we typically think of with veins. They are actually formed primarily by space. So if you think of the dura as being two layers, which it is, we've got the first layer of the dura actually attaches inside the cranium and is essentially the periosteum of the cranium. And then we have the second layer, which then forms sheaths and dips in to create the intracranial membranes. So here, my handy dandy model, we've got the orange is the folk cerebri, our vertical membrane, and below the tent, we've got the Falx cerebelli, dividing the cerebellum in half. And then the green layer is the tentorium. So the tentorium cerebelli separates the um, cerebellum below from the cerebral cortex above. There we go. This is the back where they meet. So they intersect the tent and the Falx just inside the occiput, you can imagine the occipital bone here. To orient you further, where they intersect, they anchor and create an internal occipital protuberance from that anchor point. The tugging of the membranes on the bone helps to shape the bone and create the internal occipital protuberance. Externally, you can feel this on your own head. Just outside of this, on the other side of the occiput, is your external occipital protuberance, or that bump at on the back of your head. So we have the two layers for the falx and we have two layers for the tent. So you can visualize, we had two layers of the dura, the one essentially is the periosteum for the cranium. That other second layer of the dura peels off and comes together to form the two layers of the falx and two layers of the tent. The space between those two layers, you can visualize that, it creates a channel and that creates a venous sinus. So we have venous sinuses following the intracranial membranes. We have the superior sagittal venous sinus, we have the inferior sagittal venous sinus, and then we also have the transverse venous sinuses. And where the membranes intersect here just inside the occiput, we've got the confluence of the sinuses. So this is pretty much where everything gathers and meets before it then travels out along the transverse sinuses, zigzags down the sigmoid sinus and out and down through the internal jugular vein. So superior sinus, sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, on the inferior leaf of the, or inferior edge of the falx. And then we have the transverse sinus. Everything meets here at the confluence of the sinuses before it travels out along the transverse, down the zigzag of the sigmoid, and out through the internal jugular. The interesting thing about these venous sinuses Unlike veins in the rest of our body, there are no muscles in the walls. It's just lined with endothelium. What that means is that in order for drainage to occur, it also depends upon slight movement, that rocking of the brain to help essentially milk the sinuses and assist with the process of drainage. So it's an interesting phenomenon and one that we can really assist with, with craniosacral therapy, is making sure that the membranes are moving freely and that the bones are able to move freely, which allows for the inherent motility and movement of the brain to express itself and assist with the drainage of the venous blood out of the cranium. One thing I wanted to point out to you as well, we have handy dandy pipe cleaner, where the internal jugular vein exits is through the jugular foramen. And if you recall, the jugular foramen exists as a space between the occiput and the temporal bone. 
So, just to help you visualize it further, imagine the pipe cleaner is your jugular vein. And so we've got exiting out of that jugular foramen, the jugular vein, along with cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. So we've got the cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve 10, vagus, and cranial nerve 11, your accessory. So some pretty ex important structures passing out through here. And keep in mind, it's dependent upon space being present there. All right, because it's not like the jugular foramen is a hole within a bone. It's a space between two bones. Just to orient you further, your mastoid process is that bump behind the back of your ear. If you feel for that, if you imagine you were able to extend your finger about an inch medially, you would run into the jugular foramen. So just to help you orient to that within yourself and then also when you're working with your clients. So that wraps up venous sinuses. Keep in mind, just to review, blood travels front to back, gathers at the confluence of the sinuses, and then travels out along the edges of the tent and down through the zigzag of the sigmoid and out through the jugular vein. So it's important to support mobility and motility through there as much as we can. Thanks for watching and look forward to other videos. Have a great day.